Welcome to Dynaudio's Ask the Expert. My name is Christopher, and with me today I have a repeat on Ask the Expert, Otto, who is one of our customer care managers, who is uh, very good at helping out customers with their questions, but you also serve as a vital link between the customer and our product development department. Sure. Thank you for, for being here again. Can you talk a little bit about what you've been up to since the last time we met? I've been quite busy answering uh, questions from all of you guys, mostly coming in via our website. Mm. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah, and I know that uh, from our last episode, you you got a lot of praise for helping out in a good way. So, uh, so we're excited to have you back here. Thank you. And, uh, and I'm ready to jump in. Are you? Sure. Let's go. Let's do it. So, cleaning auto, uh, the mid-range and the base units, uh, Craig and Mark have asked how you would go about cleaning the membrane and the rubber surround. Yes, actually that is uh, quite simple uh, because the MSP membranes that we're using in all of our woofers, it's a quite robust, quite sturdy material and you shouldn't be too afraid of, of handling it. Um, what we recommend is use a microfiber cloth, um, make it moist and basically just wipe it down mm. like you would any other surface. Uh, wipe it off with a dry microfiber cloth afterwards, uh, should be microfiber. Um, and nothing will basically happen to the, to the membrane, uh, so it's quite easy to clean. Yeah. And that's it. That's for the, the membrane. First step. That's it. Yes. Yeah. The rubber surround. How would you? What What would you do with that? Uh, first off, again, uh, clean it uh, with a microfiber cloth uh, to make sure nothing sits on it, uh, and then treat it with uh, some rubber care. Um, for instance, Sonax. Uh, uh, should be made for uh, specifically for soft rubber. Mm. Uh, other than that, it's again quite a sturdy material, so it doesn't uh, it shouldn't actually be too worried about handling uh, the material, just rubbing in the rubber care, and then you will make it look nicer, but also actually extend the lifetime of the woofer. So okay, so, uh, basically there is no foul play if you touch any of this, and you can be a little bit rough, no, no, not this. rough, but. You can clean it as you would. Yes, this is the exact opposite of, of the tweeter, that it's uh, it's actually very sturdy. You can you can handle it mm. in, in a lot of ways without being too afraid of it. It's, yeah. uh, it's not a problem. Moist cloth, dry cloth, and then some Sonax to finish off. Yes. Perfect. Otto, one of the uh, most common questions we got was about the fragile nature of the soft dome, especially how you would clean it. Yes. This is also one question we very often get in customer care, is um, if you get dust on the tweeter, how do you actually handle that? Um, basically, the answer is quite simple. Uh, you shouldn't actually try to clean the actual membrane. Uh, you can blow away the dust like this. Just whatever doesn't fall off by doing that, you should leave alone because cleaning, trying to clean the membrane will actually make more damage to the membrane than mm -hmm. leaving the dust there. Okay. So it, it might not look as nice that you have dust on the dome, but uh, with regards to sound quality, it doesn't make any difference. And if you try to you know, get it off, it would do more harm than good? It would good. definitely do more harm than good on the dome, so you shouldn't try that in any way. So don't touch it. Yep. If you are unlucky enough to have touched it, we've seen some pictures in our time here, uh, what do you actually do then to, to get it out? What, what often happens? Uh, with our dome is that if it gets pushed, don't try this at home, kids. Uh, you get uh, a pushed-in dome, so now what do you do? Um, as quickly as possible after you find out this has happened, uh, what you basically should do is suck it out. Suck so it out. We've done blowing, now it's time for sucking. <laughs> um, so don't use your vacuum cleaner because it might be too powerful and actually damage the membrane. So it's quite a simple process, actually like that and now it's uh, as good as new make out with the tweeter yeah yeah sometimes what uh, happens is that uh, you leave some wrinkles behind um, but usually that doesn't actually affect the sound quality um, um, so they don't they don't matter yeah don't it, well um, it might not again might not look as nice uh, but there's nothing you can really do about it okay. once it's become wrinkled you can't really change that no. so uh, if you wanted to look completely brand new again there's nothing to do but actually uh, replace get the treater yeah. get a new treater that's nothing is new forever mm. uh, if, if it needs to look new it's you have need to, buy to replace it. it yes a question that comes up then is why have we chosen to uh, to make it 
vulnerable. Why did we make this design? That's uh, that's two parts in that uh, question. Uh, one of them is uh, the dome we are using uh, is actually a textile dome like this. Um, but what you can see is there's a lot of holes in the dome. So even though it's a black material, it's basically see-through. Mm. Um, and this in itself would actually make no sound because of all the holes. Yeah. So it's covered with uh, a coating. That's the actual membrane. This coating is basically what's making the sound. This is just there to hold the coating. Mm. Uh, the coating wouldn't work without this. Um, but this also makes the dome very light. Uh, so we have a better dynamics because of this way of, of making it. If we made a thicker dome uh, without the coating, uh, we could make a tweeter that, that would be less fragile, mm. uh, but it wasn't, wouldn't sound as good as the one we're using. Uh, second part of it is that um, when you look at uh, the dome, it's actually sticking out quite far from, mm. from the cabinet. Uh, this is also done uh, deliberately to help sound quality. We have a better dispersion to the sides from the tweeter because it's sticking out like this. Okay. So it is a, a deliberate choice of sound quality over convenience. There are good reasons for doing it in that yes, way. Yes, definitely. So if we, if we were to sum up, I guess, uh, do not touch at any circumstance. If you by accident have pushed it in, it's uh, get it up to your mouth and then just uh, suck it out. That's it. Yep. We have a lot of questions about finishes, Otto. Uh, Mike and Ruben and a lot of other people would like to know how to clean them. Yes, as a general rule, uh, it's actually quite simple. I use a microfiber cloth um, with water on it, mm -hmm. damp microfiber cloth, wipe down uh, the cabinet, uh, wipe uh, with a dry cloth afterwards uh, to make sure it doesn't leave any water on mm. the cabinet. And in normal use, you should leave it at that. You shouldn't actually try to do anything special to maintain no. the finish. It's just about keeping it keep simple. It, keep it clean, keep it simple. Yeah. If you doing that process, I uh, unfortunate enough to find out that you have a scratch or something like that. What would you recommend people do? Um, generally, we can't give one broad bad answer that will work for everyone because all the finishes are different. The okay. kind of lacquer, the kind of treatment that goes into each kind of finish mm. is different. So uh, make sure that you don't use any chemicals or materials or anything on it other than, than water. Uh, before you've asked your dealer uh, for this particular finish, what should I do? Mm. Uh, and he can work with us to try to find a solution if necessary and if possible. Sometimes there's nothing you can do but just keep it clean. Okay. Um, other times there are things you can do to, to the finish. But we're not going to give a, a general answer because it's so dependent on each finish. Yeah. So don't bring out your most expensive car polish uh, because it can do more damage than good. Sometimes it can, yes. Yeah. Okay. The next question is from Chassat, who has a pair of older contours with steel front baffles. Yes. And he'd like to know how to, to clean them. Uh, cleaning the steel baffle is basically the same as the cabinet. Microfiber cloth, uh, put some water on mm. it, uh, wipe whatever is on the baffle, uh, wipe it off with a dry cloth. Uh, and basically, that's it. You shouldn't use any cleaner, uh, any material on it because that no. can actually hurt the surface of uh, the baffle. So just the microfiber cloth again? Yes. Perfect. Ben has been unfortunate and dropped his uh, speakers on the floor. Um, and so he asks, how do I make sure that they are not damaged? Actually, it's uh, more simple than you might think that usually if you damage uh, a driver, um, there will be some kind of damage to the voice mm. coil or something, and, and it would make a very obvious scraping sound. Yeah. Uh, basically, if it sounds fine and it looks fine, it probably is fine. Okay. Uh, there's not, nothing to worry about. Um, it's it's most damages that happens to to drivers whether it's tweeters or, or woofers it's actually very noticeable so it's a, if it's an actual damage mm. uh, you, you're not you're not really in doubt okay so, so if you're in doubt probably nothing's wrong with so it. when you say noticeable is that both visually and sound wise so it could look fine from the outside uh, but again the, the voice coil could be scraping on okay. uh, but then when you're playing music you would be hearing some some bad noises mm. and usually they they are very obvious okay so if you're hearing strange noises from the speakers that shouldn't be there contact the dealer okay uh, yeah contact the dealer yes yes Otto, we've been on a roll here with a lot of good questions but uh, unfortunately we are out of questions now so we have to uh, end the show 
But before we do so, I want to sum up. With the tweeter, it's do not touch, blow at it gently, mid-range and base units, microfiber cloth, and the same goes for the cabinet, use a, a microfiber cloth. Okay. Thank you so much for being on here today. You're welcome. Thank you. And thank all of you for your excellent questions. See you next time.